Okay, so the next definition is a remote control circuit. We're actually gonna cover a few here. Uh, remote control circuit, signaling circuit, and then class one, class two, and class three circuits. We, we really have to do those as a group or it doesn't make any sense. Let's start with a remote control circuit. That's a circuit that controls another circuit through a relay or equivalent device. I still think the best example, the most relatable example, is the garage door opener. So obviously we have the power circuit, right? And that's chapters one through four of the NEC. You know, you're gonna use MC cable in chapter three and a box and you know wire connectors and everything else. That's your power circuit. And then over here on the right, that's my remote control circuit. It goes from the opener itself over to the push button on the wall. That's a remote control circuit. That circuit, the low voltage wires, it does what? It controls the power circuit through a relay or equivalent device. Okay, so that's a remote control circuit. Now remote control circuits are broken down into class one, class two, and class three, which we'll hit in just one second. Before we get there, I quickly wanna talk about a signaling circuit. A signaling circuit is simply a circuit that energizes signaling equipment. Okay, so your doorbell circuit, that would be a signaling circuit. It doesn't control a different circuit through a relay, so it's not a remote control circuit. It kind of seems like it is, because it's like, well, how is that different than a garage door opener? Well, because the garage door opener, when I push it, it goes through a relay in the opener, and it makes and breaks the current, right, to supply the unit, and it's a remote control circuit. That's really not what happens with a doorbell. When I hit the doorbell, it's just signaling equipment, right? It sends a signal and it hits the little solenoid on the, on the doorbell and it makes a chime and that's it. So that would be a signaling circuit. Uh, a burglar alarm is another example of a signaling circuit. Now I mentioned that we break these things down into class one, class two, and class three. By the way, these used to be uh, defined in Article, one, in Article 725. Now they're in Article 100. But we have class one, class two, and class three. Now, a class one circuit is wiring between an overcurrent device or a power limited power source and the equipment that it connects to. So we're talking about a remote control circuit here. But here's the thing with a class one circuit. A class one is not considered safe from electric shock or fire. Uh, if you've ever dealt with medium voltage motors, like a 4160 volt motor, usually we'll use a 120 volt control circuit to control that 4160 volt motor. I say usually, at least it's certainly not uncommon to do it that way. So when I say a remote control circuit, a lot of people immediately just assume that we're talking low voltage. Uh, no, that's, that's not the case at all. We can have line voltage and we can have, you know, really an unlimited amount of current, whatever circuit breaker or fuse uh, we install. So a class one circuit can go right up to 600 volts. Much more common we have class two and class three circuits. A class two circuit is wiring between a class two power source and the equipment that it connects to. Now these circuits are considered safe as it relates to electric shock and fire. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is a garage door opener and it actually says NEC class two right on it. By the way, how do you know you have a class two circuit? Well, you know you have a class two circuit because the power source says class two. If it doesn't say class two, then it is not class two, okay? So it has to say class two, or it can say information technology equipment, ITE, like a modem creates a class two circuit. So class two circuit is considered safe from both electric shock and fire. Let me do a quick little example here. This is just a, uh, you know, a USB plug-in charger. And if I hold it up to the camera, hopefully it'll focus correctly. There we go. Nine volts, 1.67 amps. Or, it disappeared again. Let's see. You have to take my word for it to go back and pause it. It also says, or five volts, two amps. You cannot kill somebody with five volts or nine volts. There's not enough voltage to drive the amount of current to kill you. So the voltage is low enough that it's safe from electric shock. 
the current is low enough that you could not generate the amount of R squared I heat to create a fire. So a class two circuit is considered from safe, is considered safe from electric shock and fire. And that's why on your garage door, you can walk right up to it and touch those terminals. And all it's going to do is give you a small shock. It's not going to, can't kill you and it's not gonna light a fire. And that's why we can splice in the open air, right? If we go back to this circuit here, you'll notice that there's some twist on wire connectors that are right there for everybody to touch. Is that permitted? Sure, yeah. We don't care about that. Can't kill anybody, can't light a fire with it. It's not a critical circuit. This is a doorbell. <laughs> you know, if, if this, uh, if, if some, if it opens and the doorbell doesn't work, well, you know, might actually kind of be a relief. So that's not a critical thing. It's not a dangerous thing. So we let you splice in the, in the open air. 300.15 does not apply to class two and class three. So class two, safe from electric shock and fire. We have a class three circuit, which is a little bit more power than a class two, but not enough that we really get too concerned. So a class three circuit is wiring between a class three power source and its supplied equipment. These circuits are considered safe as it relates to fire, so they're low enough in current. And they're, just be honest with each other, they're safe enough as it relates to electric shock. They are, uh, they are a higher voltage or they can be a higher voltage than a class two circuit. So we can't say that they're completely safe from shock. I mean, look, take this USB thing, right? Plug it in and if you wanna, if you wanna chew on the USB cord, the only way it's gonna kill you is if you choke on it, right? <laughs> now with a class three circuit, there's more voltage. So I don't wanna say that it's completely safe from electric shock, but it's safe enough. I mean, look, even for class three, we don't really care about open splices and things like that. So class two and class three are both considered safe enough, all right? Class one is not. Class one can operate at up to 600 volts and the current's not limited. So really, in Article 725, we have class two and class three, and we have class one, and we treat them completely different. Now, in the 2023 code, uh, right now I'm recording this in uh, July of 2021, but it appears that in the 2023 code, we're actually gonna create a new type called class four, and that's going to operate completely different than class one, class two, and class three. So I don't wanna get into that quite yet because the, the ink's not dry on the code book yet. You know, we haven't quite decided everything, but when we do, we'll definitely make a video covering uh, class four circuits as well. So remote control circuit, it operates another circuit through a relay or similar, and we subdivide it into class one, class two, and class three. Class one is not considered safe from shock or fire. So that class one control circuit, you gotta wire it in EMT, or you know PVC conduit, MC, it must be a proper chapter three wiring method. Class two and class three, we can use doorbell wire. We can use twisted pair cable, you know, things like that. We use class two and class three cables.